Good day everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful day and today we're going to be talking about our friend the clarinet. Wonderful instrument really. So let's get talking about it. Now the clarinet belongs to the woodwind section at the metamagin, it's made of wood and it is a wind instrument which means you blow into it to create the sound. It's got a very very warm and um, deliberate uh, tone. I don't know. Now one second, tones are for me it's very difficult to describe them. So it's got a very very warm and sort of deliberate tone to it. And this plays in both the soprano and alto registers. It can play a bit of alto and plays mostly soprano, but plays in all senses plays both. And it's quite an important instrument for the orchestra, especially for the woodwind section. But most instruments in the orchestra are important for the orchestra. So before we get into exactly its entire repertoire stream and everything to do with that. We'll first let's take a look at its anatomy. So now coming to the anatomy. So up here we have what you could call the mouth, what you could call the mouthpiece, but it's basically a piece for your mouth which has houses a reed. So this is the front view. If you look to the back view, you would see just behind this you have a piece of wood sticking out, which is secured by this metal enclosure right here, and that's a reed. And we'll come to why that's important in just a bit. But yes, this is makes use of a single reed which is just a single piece of wood which looks kind of like that so it tapers up towards the end there great uh, so this is the overall mouthpiece this is where you're blowing in this is where the sound is created uh, this is a joint once again most of the may sort of break up you take it out break up into joints and this is the barrel joint it's called the barrel joint this here is called the upper joint this here is called the lower joint and this here is called the belt the barrel joint is the ferrital so then you have the upper joint where a lot of keys are present, same thing for the lower joint, you have a lot of keyholes and keys present, and then for the bell is where the sound exits, the air exits through the bell, it sort of tapers outwards like that. And that's really all that there is to the anatomy, as I said, the woodwind instruments are quite rudimentary. I don't know more than at me, and um, I don't know the layout of keys specifically and stuff, but I do know that's the key there. Okay, great. So now the anatomy, the basic anatomy has been laid down, great for everyone. So now, however, let's try to talk about the how this instrument creates sound. How is this instrument creating sound? Well, um, similar to the oboe, it is all about the reed. So, as you might imagine, we're wondering how can blowing into an instrument create a sound? Like when I blow normally, no sound at all. How is blowing into, even if I blow through a pipe, no sound at all. So how is it, how is it, how am I getting such cool sounds from an instrument which is, which is a, you know, wood with a bunch of which is a wooden instrument, how am I getting the sound? Well, that has to do with the reed. The sound itself has to do with the reed. So, you blow into the mouthpiece, right? And what you're doing is, when you're blowing, blowing into it, the reed is vibrating. You're causing the reed to vibrate. So, when you blow into the saxophone, what you're doing is you're causing the reed to vibrate. Boom, so it vibrates like this. This is an exaggerated motion, but it's vibrating like this, right? And once it, once it vibrates like that, I was having my episode that that vibration that the wood is doing, not your it's not your breath. Your breath your 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 um, breath is causing the reed to vibrate, this wood to vibrate. And that wood vibration is what resonates in this in this enclosure and comes out and creates the violin the titular violin sound. So once again you are blowing into the reed and the reed is vibrating and that vibration of that piece of wood is what's resonating and creating the titular the clarinet sound, the famous clarinet sound. So that answers your question, hopefully. Now when we come to the keys, how can we produce all the different notes, all the, all the different pitches? Well, that, uh, that's how to do the keys. Um, if you're watching all these videos in sequence, I'm sure I must sound redundant, but just in case you haven't seen the other videos, the basis upon which all woodwind instruments work is that if you force air to go through a small pipe, a small portion, a small pipe, it will have a high sound. And if you force air to go towards a large pipe, it would have a greater sound. It would have a, sorry, let me see greater. It's going high, low. So longer pipe, lower, shorter pipe, higher. Right? That's the basis upon which all woodwind instruments work. And now my brass instruments tend to make this, make, like actually make it longer and shorter. But woodwind instruments do, they have keys. So when you're not pressing any keys, it's going, coming like this, and it's going out from the first two keys. Right? Or going out from the first key. I'm not aware of the exact specifics, but my point is they go out from the first few keys. And when you press down more and more keys, what you're doing is you're forcing the air to go longer and a bit longer and a bit longer and then it exits through the keys. And only when you press all of them will it finally exit through the bell. It will come out through the bell and that will ideally be your lowest note. Right? Now in reality it's probably much more complicated than this, but this is a simplified version of it. 
and uh, basically the keys change the pitch. That's why you really need to know not to provide the intricacies. And that's about how the why, uh, um, the clarinet makes sound and about the anatomy. As the clarinet has a very very deliberate and very very warm tone, very very warm timbre, and that's something that's quite useful in the orchestra. And due to this warm timbre, due to this very deliberate sound, again I, I'm using the same adjective. I don't really know how else to describe it. So hearing it for yourself is going to be much better. Okay. Anyways, so. Yeah, that's it. so that that sound it has is quite suited for melodies as well. So just like the flute and oboe, both suited for melodies. This is also suited for melody. Most woodwind instruments, most 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 woodwind instruments, in fact, are suited for melodies. And as I said, this is suited for melody. Great. Now this play the soprano alto register. I already talked about that, which means it's playing the higher parts but also the middle parts. You can play both, right? And you usually find it more towards the middle side. So if the oboe is playing the higher parts. If the flute is playing the high and very high parts. You find the clarinet slightly lower on the string, playing the slightly more middle parts, not very high, not very middle, just in the middle. <laughs> Sounds just kind of confusing, but if you are familiar with the terminology, it plays in the alto register as well as the soprano register, in between them and in both. Okay, that being said, just come to its role in the orchestra and in other ensembles. Okay, now in the orchestra, as I said, it participates as part of the woodwind section, and if the flute is the leader, this is kind of like the co-leader. I mean, it really depends. The violin is. Definitely the leader of the string section. Well, as, as I said, the woodwind is slightly more goosey goosey. The flute is often the leader. The clarinet can also often take charge. So the clarinet is important. Don't overlook it. It's almost as prominent as the flute. Sometimes, in some cases, more prominent. So point is, it sort of along with the woodwind section supports the rest of the orchestra, adds more color, adds accompanying melodies, adds accompanying harmonies, everything necessary, and it plays the middle parts for the woodwind section. So when you've got a woodwind section consisting of a flute, a oboe, a clarinet and a bassoon, that's it. That's usually the woodwind section which you have. You usually don't have instruments like the English horn and the bass clarinet and everything there. Those are very those are not very common. Right? So if you have these four instruments only, the clarinet is going to be playing a lot more alto than you might expect because it needs to fill in those middle pitches which are lacking from the other instruments like the English horn. Right. So indeed what you'd find is, is that the um so the clarinet plays the middle parts uh, in the piece, in the woodwind section. So it's supporting, that's how it participates in the woodwind section. And the woodwind section itself is once again supporting with melodies and harmonies and sort of bringing, making the orchestra sound more colorful and more whole. This plays a big part in that. Big part, trust me. Um, you hear the orchestra, the full thing, but when you bring it on top of the instruments, your clarinet is quite important. And then another thing to keep in mind, within the orchestra, clarinets also take up the, just as, um, a lot of the woodwind instruments are melody oriented, but when the melodies, the main melodies transition to the woodwind section, uh, you'd find that the clarinet also plays a very important role. Uh, and second thing, the clarinet is also called a part for solo. That means when the entire orchestra is silent and only the clarinet is playing, that happens quite often, and you can expect it to happen with the clarinet quite often. So yeah, so the clarinet does a very good solo that participates in the main melody when the woodwind is playing the main melody quite well. In the woodwind section, it plays the middle parts. And when the woodwind section is supporting, it helps to support the orchestra with uh, melodies, the string section with melodies, and harmonies and accompaniment. And making the music sound more colorful and whole. You have to sum it all up. That's indeed true. In terms of repertoire, it's of course a, a, a participates in orchestral repertoire. I'm not sure about woodwind ensembles, but I'm pretty sure the um, clarinet is also a major part of woodwind ensembles. And as a solo instrument, it's got quite a lively career. There's a lot of tons of solo music. Repertoire for I mean um, for clarinet actually among the woodwind instruments I think the flute and the clarinet have the most then the oboe bassoon have about the same perhaps the bassoon has some more but point is this has a lot of solo repertoire as well Mozart's famous clarinet concerto is said to be one of his masterpieces so that's something to keep in mind anywho that's all I really have to say about the clarinet it's a very interesting instrument I like it quite a lot I used to have I had a best friend um, who used to play the clarinet he was a nice guy I don't know why I'm saying that but yeah. That being said, from my side, thank you so much for uh, listening in today. Hopefully you took something valuable away. Hopefully you learned something. And this is me wishing you a wonderful rest of the day. Have fun. See you. Bye.